Joining me now is Tara Christie, President and CEO at Banyan Gold. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now, we, uh, you have an updated resource. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, maybe you could remind uh, everybody about the, the Ormac uh, project in uh, Yukon because uh, you've got the large inferred resource, your near infrastructure, and other mines as well, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So we just put out that 7 million ounce resource, and we're immediately beside Heckless High Grade Silver Mine, Victoria Gold's heap leach mine is just 25 kilometers as the crow flies away from us in this tombstone mining belt. And we're also an intrusion related gold deposit. Similar to Snowline and Victoria, you know, we have this sheeted vein system, which is the primary mineralization in the deposit, and we have exceptional infrastructure. We've got roads that are all season maintained by the Yukon government. We have a power line that's only energized to half its capacity and goes right to a hydro dam that's only 50 kilometers away, which is also connected to the broader Yukon Git grid. And we even have cell phone service and fiber optic cable on the property. So, you know, huge infrastructure benefits uh, really will be help us and the future of this project. So the updated resource uh, look uh, pretty robust. You're looking at 7 million ounces, more than uh, 6 million of that at, at power lines. So what are some of the other highlights of, of this? Well, the overall grade is 0.63. And people say, oh, that's low grade. And I go, well, but look closer uh, within that. If you look at the cutoff grade, say a 0.6, there's 4 million ounces of a gram. And we have a graphic, a 3D visualization of that. And then if you look at a 0.9 cutoff, there's 2.5 million ounces at 1.5. And again, and looking at the graphic visualization of that. So yes, we did the resource, but we've also been doing our own internal high-level scoping studies to understand where the engineering pits are, not just the, the inferred resource pits. And that's really, that's where you gotta find the high grade. It's, you've gotta find the, the area, which are your starter pit or pits, which really drive your IRR and your payback. And so I think that we can see areas which we know if we, we are confident if we can drill them off, might be those starter pit areas. So it's actually kind of exciting. You know, this is an iterative process where, you know, we've got to that scale where we're significant, and now we really just have to continue to prove it's economic. Can you flesh that out a bit, Tara, in terms of delineating uh, the, these higher grade zones and what the, the immediate plans are? And what you're doing? So now that we put out the resource, we are spending a bunch of time on that engineering piece and combining it with what we know geologically um, before we get out and drill. And in this market, you know, that's uh, uh, every dollar is worth. Well, I kind of we raised them at 40 cents. We're currently at around 30 cents. So we got to take that into to account that they're even more valuable than they were before. So mm -hmm. how do we improve our odds of success? How do we actually delineate that? We're looking at the structure, the geology, as well as understanding where you'd mine first and over, overlapping that, assuming that that's our one of our targets. But you know, we also can look for the intrusion. We know we can continue to add ounces. We have lots of options uh, for what we can do with the money we have in the bank. We're planning somewhere around five to. 6,000 meters of drilling this year with the money we have in the bank. And we actually have this strange thing called income, which lots of juniors don't have from renting out our facilities. So that bolsters us a little bit in our treasury. Very good. Now you've said before that uh, 8 million ounces is sort of a critical level to attract a major, which begs the question, what's, hmm. what's the end game here uh, at your company? We have options on that yeah, too. Yeah. You know, if um, we're starting to put in the project development team now, we added Kai Wollishen, our VP project development, because we need to start doing those internal studies. We need to get the baseline environmental in hand. We need to continue and expand our metallurgy, which we're doing um, towards, you know, eventually permitting and potentially this project going into construction. I think a management team changes when you go into construction. So if that's the right outcome for Banyan, we'd make sure to set that up for success. But quite honestly, it's 7 million ounces. Uh, that's a very large number. That would be significant to the balance sheet of many mid-tier and large-tier miners. Uh, and, you know, say to Victoria Gold, it could potentially double their production. To a Hecla, who's also right next to us, you know, they're obviously looking to grow and have made significant gold investment. So it's not really um, what my plans are. It's what's best for my shareholders. Wow. I'm a big shareholder, which I've purchased in the market alongside my shareholders or in finance. Financings. So I'm thinking what are the best outcomes and quite frankly optionality is, you know, whether somebody acquires us as a standalone project, whether one of our neighbors potentially acquires us, whether somebody's looking at the district and sees, wow, you know, I don't see it too far off there being 20 million ounces within 20 kilometers. That's pretty exciting. That's a district. And when these big companies are looking for generational investments, when they're looking for making an investment in a community where the mine ultimately runs 20, 30, 40 years, 
I'm, I'm thinking that's what I need to make our project look like and this jurisdiction. All right, so you're nicely located, uh, nice sized resource and, and getting bigger. Uh, you've said before though that the exploration results right now are not being rewarded. Your shares along with many others are undervalued. So against that backdrop, uh, sort of sum up the, the investment case here for Banyan. Well, I think when you just look at us right now as we're trading $8 per ounce compared to many of our pre-development peers, which are trading between $30 and $70 per ounce, we have a real potential to re-rate as we get out and tell the story. We just put out the metallurgy and the the new resource and quite frankly you can't just put out a news release without going out and actually talking to um, a lot of the institutions and others and institutions aren't necessarily driven by news releases they really are driven by doing a lot more work and those are the next phase of investors that we're going to continue to build upon so I think we'll re-rate just on what we have alone as we get in a stronger gold market uh, but we're going to have news flow we're continuing to do our metallurgy work we know we'll have a drill program this year and we're really going to focus it on what we think is going to add the most value and we are very strategic in how we allocate our capital that's why we ended up with seven million dollars in the bank today uh, you know we we are um, really driven to really make sure that we're we're doing the things that are right for the market and sometimes that's not drilling sometimes it's all the other stuff which shows that this is a potentially economic project which are, are going to be the real value drivers. Thanks, Tara. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Very good. Tara Christie, President and CEO at Banyan Gold.